everyone, um, and thank you for joining me for this talk. Uh, today, um, I will be talking about uh, our non-intrusive load monitoring platform at ClaimUp. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know, we are a startup that in Zurich that specializes in energy data analytics. Um, and today, uh, we have several data analytics modules. Uh, today, I will be specifically talking about our non-intrusive load monitoring. Uh, so just to give you a bit of an overview of our company before I uh, dive into the machine learning. Um, so we have um, specific IoT edge meters that we have uh, that measure um, power data in high frequency. Um, and we have applications for smart grid, which includes EV charging stations and um, microgrids. We have a smart infrastructure and smart buildings. So this is buildings both for uh, small to medium enterprises and also for homes. And then we have a smart factory, which now includes production lines. So we have our energy IoT platform, um, which collects data, not only from our sensors, but also from other sensors. Um, we have our data analytics modules that run on our IoT platform. And then we have user interfaces that include um, uh, online dashboards and application and email modules uh, that uh, provide our customers with our energy analytics data. Um, so in our digital ecosystem, uh, we specialize um, in three major areas. First, our analytics modules and our machine learning. Uh, today, I'll, we'll be specifically talking about non-intrusive load monitoring. Uh, we also have our dedicated hard hardware solutions, um, which I will discuss in the next slide, as it is where a lot of our data for our analytics comes from. Um, and then we also, as I mentioned, have our user interface and experience modules. So our submetering products here. Um, we have our first product, which was our ClaimUp one. Uh, this module essentially records power data at high frequencies, as opposed to a smart meter that might record uh, readings at oh, um, essentially from 15 minutes to probably about one minute data. Um, our power uh, meter or data analyzer, as we'd like to call it sometimes, um, measures at much higher frequencies, higher than one second. Um, and this allows us to essentially utilize this non-intrusive load monitoring software. Our claim up one was our first sensor that was for customers uh, typically in home use applications or in small uh, business applications. We also have our claim up energy monitor that works for small to medium enterprises. And we have our claim up grip, which works for higher power applications, uh, for example, in um, micro uh, microgrid applications, for example. So from this, uh, this uh, product, this hardware, uh, we have not only um, high frequency power measurement data, um, for specific meter points, but we also have onboard edge computing, um, which I will discuss in this slide. Um, first, I'll give a bit of an introduction for uh, load monitoring. So there's two types of way to do this. First, there is intrusive load monitoring, which is specifically when appliances are individually metered. Um, and this means that you can exactly measure their energy consumption, but it also poses quite a high cost for um, hardware to be implemented. Um, and, and data is collected at many different points for this. Uh, there's also non-intrusive load monitoring, um, which is when a single uh, meter point measuring many appliances um, is essentially uses machine learning uh, algorithms to disaggregate these appliances from each other. So in this graph, I have on the left here, um, the aggregated power for a specific sensor, um, which essentially has uh, from all of the three phases of energy consumption, uh, the combined usage here that is aggregated. And on the right, I have the disaggregated power for some of the major appliances, uh, which in this case include electronics, a coffee maker, a dishwasher, an oven and a stove. We have the standby consumption um, for other appliances such as lighting or small electronics. And then we have the refrigerator that runs also. So this is an example of our algorithm functioning on the specific power data and what the disaggregation uh, using our non-intrusive load uh, monitoring algorithms actually does. So uh, first, to give you, you kind of an overview of the non-intrusive load monitoring algorithm space, uh, there are a lot of algorithms that are used in this framework, um, and they're very dependent on um, the frequency of data that you get for your power readings. So when these algorithms were initially proposed, um, a lot of people uh, proposed using um, power meter readings uh, often as much as thousands of times per second, so in the kilohertz range. Um, and the traditional event-based methods uh, uh, were used, which is uh, an event-based method is essentially when you try to detect from the power data whether an event or an, of a specific appliance is on or off 
And from this, you can try to classify such a device. Using lower frequency data, which is now becoming much more popular due to the um, proliferation of smart meters, um, we have non-invest based methods, which typically use lower frequency data for this. And they use different techniques because um, uh, they can't rely so much on the accuracy of these event-based methods due to their low uh, time resolutions. And in this space, um, most of the models in there, I, I would say the most popular is a hidden Markov model, um, but there's other new algorithms that are being used. And then after these algorithms, uh, these events are classified, we can then do a load disaggregation, um, which is applicable to both of these algorithms. So on our own specific IoT platform, I'll now describe how it works. I mentioned our hardware that we have in our company, which we have these edge IoT sensors that have high frequency power data. So we have for this readings in voltage currents, active power, reactive power, power factor, um, and phase angle. Uh, we have our um, real-time event detection algorithm. So this is detecting, this is, um, as I mentioned, an event-based algorithm since we have high-frequency data. Um, it detects to see whether an appliance is running or not. Um, and if the appliance uh, is running online on the sensor, it will try to map this appliance to see whether this appliance is something that the sensor has already mapped before and is categorized by the sensor or whether this is a new appliance that's running. When new appliances are detected, this is sent to um, our cloud, so our, our ClayMap cloud, which runs on cloud services. Um, it, we have computing modules on there that run another machine learning algorithm that uses uh, a supervised neural network algorithm to detect uh, from these new um, centroids or uh, new appliances that have been mapped, what type of appliances are these compared to um, our data sets of, of uh, that we've collected uh, over time, essentially, of different appliances running. Once these new uh, appliances have been classified, uh, depending on our current database um, and our uh, machine learning models, then we're able to do our load defragmentation. Uh, we can compute the statistics for a specific sensor from the power data and the appliance events that have now all been mapped to specific appliances. Um, and the data for how much energy is consumed is shown on our platform. So just a bit of an overview about the event detection model. Um, it uses a sliding window and it runs in real time on the sensors. So if uh, you have something running essentially in uh, on your meter points, uh, you'll be able to see it on the platform in real time. And here we just have a screenshot from our energy platform that shows how it works um, in a simple case, essentially. Um, and this runs in real time. So it detects both rising and falling events in real time on the edge computing device. Um, then for the appliance classification, uh, I mentioned before, it uses this power data to characterize um, new appliances and it uses it to compare to the existing appliances that we have in our database. So we have our training data, um, uh, which exists on our cloud um, platform in our, in our uh, energy databases um, for this, for these appliances that we've previously mapped. Um, and the algorithm is able to compare these new appliances to the existing databases of appliances. Um, and then these new centroids that are classified um, can then essentially be used to add it to the training data set to improve the algorithm. Um, so once we have these new centroids classified, then essentially we know for each of the appliance events in a particular day what is running, and we can run our uh, load defragmentation and then compute the user statistics. So you may be wondering um, what type of error is normally associated with uh, this di disaggregation. And there's two types of error that is normally seen here. Uh, the first is the error in the event detection, which in our case is we find this is actually the greater source of error between the two types, um, which is uh, when um, an event is, is not detected or detected incorrectly for, for what the actual truth of something is. Um, in this case, most of the error in this case is, is appliances of very small things that uh, fall under the threshold of major appliances. So this is, um, for example, if you have a very large appliance running in your home, such as a heat pump, and you have your phone charging, um, uh, the noise produced from the running of the heat pump is often so much that it would dwarf any sort of uh, recognition of, of your smaller appliances that are running simultaneously. Um, so this happens with very quiet appliances also, which uh, includes things like lighting or small power electronics. Um, these things are often difficult to categorize and can sometimes end up not being classified through the algorithm whatsoever. 
Currently, what we estimate with this is our air for these is about five to 15%, depending on the meter. Um, certain sensors that are installed in certain environments are much noisier than other ones, and the air tends to be higher for noisier sensors. Um, but we also have pre-processing um, that tries to reduce this noise before we push it through our algorithms uh, to try to reduce this. But on average, we would say that um, five to 15% of the total energy to, uh, from a single measurement point um, is attributed to this sort of other categories of we don't know exactly which um, appliance in the household um, is using this. But, but all of the major appliances in, in households, for example, in, in many industries can be very well characterized um, and we know exactly how much energy they're, uh, they're consuming in this case. So now I'll mention um, an alternative, which is low frequency disaggregation. So we have some upcoming projects where we will have to work with customers that don't have our sensors installed um, and they're working more so with smart meter data. Um, so in this case, we're looking at one meter data and how to classify these. Um, and we have upcoming projects where we're applying the hidden markup models to disaggregate this one minute data. Um, so here's an example of uh, a lot of these uh, appliances when they run, they have kind of a signature in between active and reactive power uh, for major appliances that allow us to cluster them and, and carefully um, categorize them. And a hit of Markov model um, is essentially from this data, it uses uh, probability distribution functions to assess uh, what is in a particular measurement point is the most likely operating state of appliances in this. So over historical data, it can build up these probability distributions um, and try to predict this. So this is an upcoming uh, feature that we're working on um, that we uh, hope to present hopefully at later meetings about. Um, and like I said before, uh, the high frequency methods of course have higher accuracies, but um, due to the proliferation of smart meters, uh, it's of very high interest to try to do some sort of disaggregation um, with uh, lower frequency data. Um, and uh, essentially we have several projects where we're working on this to try to see um, how well this will work for, for certain projects. Um, another module that we have that's related to our power um, metering devices is our forecasting and anomaly detection model. So based off of this power data, we're actually able to very accurately predict um, the energy forecasting with as little as three months of training data. Um, and generally these accuracies are about 90% uh, for prediction in these cases. Um, and these forecasting models can also be used for anomaly detection. And for this is for us, this is particularly interesting because we have applications um, of this, of very high production anomalies can typically uh, be used to understand uh, what could be done in terms of load shifting to try to reduce these peaks. So these peak anomalies uh, can be used to study of how can we reduce peak energy demand in these cases um, so that we can essentially manage load shifting or, or try to get um, our customers to, to reduce their peak energy consumption in these ways. And the other uh, aspect of this is low energy consumption, which wouldn't normally be considered a problem, um, but we have one user application uh, for a clever guard project where we're applying this in elderly homes. And uh, the algorithms are learning the, the natural schedules of the people in these, um, in these that are living in their homes. Um, and we want to be able to see whether they're adhering to normal schedule of usage in their homes or if they may have particularly low energy consumption, this could have um, applications for sensing that something may be off in, um, in uh, the care of this person in their home, or essentially. So we're also introduced, uh, we also are interested in the anomaly detection for the low um, electricity application cases, and we're investigating this as well. Uh, so just to give you a quick overview, uh, since I, I think uh, I've almost run out of time, um, we had our first hardware products launched for our B2C business case. So this was for customers and homes in 2018. We've expanded now to small to medium enterprises and also industries um, for our latest products, such as the CleanUp Energy Monitor and uh, data analytics for the B2B business cases. We have ongoing research projects such as Social Power Plus and Clever Guard, where we utilize this non-intrusive load monitoring um, disaggregation uh, directly for these projects. Um, and uh, our uh, software solution has also been rated by the Solar Impulse Foundation um, as a, a viable solution to be included um, uh, for the energy transition uh, to try to reduce your energy consumption. 
And we have a launch of additional data analytics uh, modules, such as condition monitoring and predictive maintenance that will happen later this year. So uh, if you're interested, uh, I would love to take your questions. Um, and uh, I have just a brief slide over the, our mission and goals in the company, which is ultimately in the energy transition to increase systems efficiency through data analytics, um, to increase uh, availability and maintenance for uh, industrial case studies and to reduce operating costs. So this is our overall company mission. And we try to bring this um, uh, for the energy transition with our data analytics. Uh, all right, so that's the end of my presentation and then I'll take any questions at this time. So thanks a lot, Portia. And let's go with questions. I've seen one in the tab, actually two. Um, so, oh great, that's nice. So Patrick asks, with respect to slide 12, what is the forecasting horizon and what is this forecasted ray solution? I think it's in, term of, in terms of uh, uh, granularity oh, yeah. of the forecast. Yeah, so this is trying to predict uh, the next uh, hour of energy consumption uh, and it's using 15 minute data. Sorry, 15 minutes of resolution? Uh, the resolution is 15 minute data. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Um, oh, and uh, that's a nice one by Ben. So what is the benefit for the consumer to install mm -hmm. your monitoring device? Uh, it depends on the consumer. So we have consumers for industrial applications and homeowners, um, which are slightly different from each other. Uh, the benefits for the consumer is from their electricity consumption. Um, a lot of our customers install these initially in their homes to see uh, where their energy consumption is coming from. Uh, we're able to benchmark consumers depending on their, their home size and how many people are in the household against other people. And we are able to tell them how much energy they, they use for specific appliances relative to, to the average in their group. So they can kind of try to monitor their, their energy monitoring behavior. In terms of industrial consumers, um, we can use the disaggregation to try to reduce industrial consumer peak load, which can often um, be a very high portion of the energy bill for industrial consumers. So they can pay up to 30% of their bill based just on the peak energy that they have um, in a particular year, for example. Um, and uh, with our monitoring solutions, we, we can very effectively reduce these peaks. This is Thank one you. application, yeah. Thank you very much for the clear explanation. So uh, we're running late and this is a Swiss conference. So I would like to okay. just make one final question. That is, yeah. uh, in your PhD, you worked yeah. on the optimization of buildings in order to mm -hmm. reduce the carbon footprint. So my question yeah. is, is there a link from load mm -hmm. monitoring to architecture? Is there mm -hmm. a way to mm -hmm. uh, use your research, your, your algorithm to help mm -hmm. architects design buildings in mm -hmm. a more efficient way. Yeah, definitely. I think in my PhD, we relied a lot. And I, I know that this, this isn't true in every research group and in, in our energy research group, we relied on white box modeling for a lot of um, the measurements of energy consumption, uh, especially for projections in the Swiss case. And from somebody who looks at a lot of sensor data now, real sensor data, I know that these models are very off for a lot of these white box models. And I really think that we should move towards black box models um, for essentially uh, for predicting energy consumption in homes. And just knowing how much energy consumption varies from household to household, uh, I think we really need to be using this sort of sensor data or smart reader data in this case to, to create projections for how much energy will be used at home and how much um, energy we can reduce in homes, not only homes, but also in industries um, based off of uh, user energy behavior changes. Um, in this way. So I think that this data is very, very valuable and it needs to be used a lot more um, in, uh, in uh, like the energy modeling um, landscape because I know that a lot of their white box models on energy consumption in the homes are very, uh, I would say uh, they should move to new methods essentially. Okay, thank you very much for this, uh, for this answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Looking at the program, I realized that we have one more minute, so let's, uh, let's use it. I will try mm -hmm. and um, merge together two questions. So uh, the one mm -hmm. by Roberto and, um, and another one. So 
Can you elaborate a little bit on the models you used mm -hmm. for uh, forecasting and on the mm -hmm. models you used for clustering? So in particular, mm -hmm. the question is, which kind yeah. of architecture did you use for forecasting and mm -hmm. how did you tackle the dimensionality reduction issue in, uh, in clustering? Uh, in terms of the specific models coming from the academic space, I would love to talk about them, but coming from someone who works for a startup, um, some things have to be company secrets. Uh, so I will not go into excessive detail. I will say that on the edge computing devices, we use uh, unsupervised clustering um, on the devices to see whether a new appliances are running or not. But in on our cloud clustering platform where we categorize the appliances, we use uh, a supervised neural network for this. And that's as much detail that I'll give about the specific um, uh, essentially algorithms that we're using in our space because uh, some, like I said, some things have to be company secrets. Um, and in terms of dimensionality, um, yeah, I, I, is there any more detail about what is specifically meant by this? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I think we need to, to stop here. So okay. if anybody yeah. wants to, to talk with you, uh, be aware mm -hmm. that the social platform allows for one-to-one -one talks. So yeah. feel free to, to get in touch with Portia. And yeah. Portia, again, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you very much.